Hey everyone, this is Shorya, and in this module, I would be talking about recursion. So before we begin, I would like to tell you what we are going to cover. Uh, so today we are going to talk about what recursion is, and understand basic recursion using an example where we calculate the factorial of a number. We are going to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of recursion, compare recursion with iteration, and see how we can find the nth term of a Fibonacci sequence using recursion. So what is recursion? Uh, recursion is a way of programming or coding a problem in which a function calls itself one or more time in its body. If a function definition fulfills the condition of recursion, we call this function a recursive function. Now, in order to get some more idea about recursion, we would soon look into an example of a recursive function that calculates factorials of a non-negative integer. But before that, I would like you to know what uh, factorials are. So for those who don't know what factorials are, factorial of a non-negative integer is nothing but the product of all the positive integers less than or equal to the number. We depict n factorial by placing an exclamation mark in front of n. And according to the definition of factorials, 6 factorial would be the product of all positive integers less than or equal to 6. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the product would amount to 720. So 6 factorial is 720. Also note that factorial of the number 0 is 1. So let's have a look at the function. Here we have the recursive function fact. Um, it has an argument x and it's basically the number we want to calculate the factorial of. This particular function is recursive since it calls itself. When we call this function with a non-negative integer, it will recursively call itself by decreasing the number by 1. Therefore, each function call basically results in the multiplication of the number with the factorial of the predecessor of the number until the number itself becomes 1. This might sound a little confusing right now, but I'm sure uh, the picture would be clearer. Over here, I would like you guys to notice that the recursion ends when the number becomes less than or equal to 1. And we're going to see why ending the recursion is so important. So as we saw in the previous slide, the recursion ends when the number is reduced to 1. A recursive function terminates if with every recursive call, we converge to the base case. In the case where a base case is not handled or where the recursion doesn't converge to the base case, we might have an infinite recursion and hence we wouldn't be able to get our solution. Uh, also, the output from the previous function would be 24 if our input is 4. Now let's see how and when each function call was made and how we reached our final solution that is the factorial of the number 4. Our first call of fact has an integer argument of 4. Since 4 is greater than 1, this function call would have to return 4 times the factorial of 4 minus 1, that is the factorial of the number 3. This was further result in another recursive call of the function fact where the argument is 3. Now since 3 is greater than 1, we would have to return 3 times the factorial of 2 to get the factorial of 3. Hence another recursive call is made with the argument equal to 2. Our recursive calls would end when the argument is equal to 1 since we have reached our base case and at this point of time we will just return 1 because factorial of 1 is equal to 1. After 1 has been returned by a final recursive call we will go back to the point from where the recursive call was made and that would be the point where our argument was 2. The product of 2 and 1 is calculated and then 2 is returned. This process will continue till we reach our original function call. That would be the call where our argument of the function was 4. Recursion has some advantages like it makes our code look cleaner and that it is extremely helpful if we are solving a problem using the divide and conquer paradigm. Divide and conquer paradigm is basically wherein we break a complex problem into much simpler subproblems and then solve them individually. And in fact, we just saw while calculating factorials that we were multiplying the bigger number with the factorial of its predecessor in order to obtain the factorial of the bigger number itself. And we were doing this process again and again till the point where our subproblem was to find the factorial of the number 1. 
and at that point we just returned 1. Furthermore, sequence generation is easier using recursion than using a nested loop. And we will return to this subject later. So, recursion has certain disadvantages as well. The logic behind recursion sometimes can be hard to follow, and therefore problems may arise during the debugging of the code. Also, recursive calls are inefficient, as you will further see when we compare the iterative solution and the recursive solution for finding the nth element of the Fibonacci sequence. One of the things that quickly relate to the word recursion is the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is named after the mathematician uh, who is better known as Fibonacci. In the Fibonacci sequence, each number in the sequence is the result of adding the previous two numbers. Therefore, the second element will be the sum of the first element, that is 1, and the zeroth element, that is 0, and this would amount to 1. Similarly, the third element would be the sum of the second element, that is 1, and the first element, that is also 1, and that would amount to 2. Fibonacci's original sequence of the Fibonacci numbers begins with f1 is equal to 1, while in modern mathematics the sequence starts with 0. But overall this has no effect on the other members of the sequence, so we can go either way. But now let's try to visualize the sequence in terms of recursion, alright? We can represent the Fibonacci sequence like many other sequences in the form of recurrence relation. In recurrence relations, each further term of the sequence is defined as the sequence of the pre preceding terms. As we can see in the recurrence relation of the Fibonacci sequence, the nth element of the sequence, where n is greater than 1, is the sum of the two previous elements of the sequence. In the relation, we also have defined the initial values of the zeroth and the first element of the sequence, and they are 0 and 1 respectively. Here is a function fib that calculates the nth element of the Fibonacci sequence. It's more or less a one-to-one -one mapping of the recursive relation we saw in the previous slide. The base cases here are there to handle the cases where the argument n is either 0 or 1. If we have a number n greater than 1, then we make two other recursive calls to get the previous two terms in the sequence and add them. These recursive calls may further lead to more recursive calls. So this is the recursive solution for getting the nth element of the Fibonacci sequence. Now let's look at the iterative solution. An iterative solution for the problem is also easy to write, as you can see, though the recursive solution looks more like the mathematical definition. Here also we have a single argument n. However, instead of making recursive calls, we run a loop n times to find the nth element. So after looking at both the solutions, which one do you think is faster? All right, let's compare the two. If we check the functions fib and fibby, we will find out that the iterative version fibby is a lot faster than the recursive version fib. To get an idea of how this a lot faster can be, we can use the time it module to measure the calls as a benchmark to compare different solutions. Time 1 is the time in seconds it takes for 3 calls to fib and time 2 the time for fibby. If we look at the uh, results, we can see that calling fib with an argument of 20 3 times needs 14 milliseconds and calling fibby with an argument of 20 needs only 0 0.011 milliseconds and that too for 3 calls. So basically, here we see that Phoebe is about 1300 times faster than Fib when the argument is 20. Now, why is it like that? Let's see. Over here, we have a calculation tree. So Fib is substituted by F over here for simplicity. We can see that the subtree F2 appears three times and the subtree for the calculation of F of 3 appears two times. If you imagine extending this tree for f of 6, you will understand that f of 4 will be called 2 times, f of 3 will be called 3 times, and so on. This means, our recursion doesn't remember previously calculated values. Every recursive call needs to reach the base case, even if some other recursive call has already reached the base case before. And these extra calls are adding to the time taken by the function to calculate the nth element of the sequence and hence making the recursive method inefficient. Now we can get over this inefficiency by um, 
implementing a memory for a recursive version by using the data structure called dictionary, which saves the previously calculated values. It is simply an ordered list of previous results, and we can see when n is equal to 1, the recursive method is faster than the iterative version by 0.73%, and when n is equal to 3, it is faster by 0.86%. As we discussed till now, uh, in recursion, a function calls itself and it solves a larger problem by breaking it down into smaller problems until the problem is so small that it can be solved easily. And then it combines the solution of these smaller problems to get the final solution. In iteration, the loop runs till the condition has been met. Both recursion and iterations can be used to perform the same task as we just saw when we implemented functions to get the nth element of the Fibonacci sequence. But which one is better? There is no clear answer to this question, but there are no trade-offs. Mathematicians often prefer a recursive approach since the solutions are often shorter and closer in spirit to the abstract mathematical entity, but good recursive solutions may be more difficult to design and test. On the other hand, a few programmers often prefer iterative solutions. So, today we learned recursive processes and saw how we can use recursion to calculate factorials and to calculate the nth element of the Fibonacci sequence. We further saw that even though recursive solutions are more natural, they are more inefficient than iterative solutions. We even learned a way to overcome this problem by using dictionaries. In the end, I want you guys to remember that a properly written recursive function must handle the base case and converge to the base case, or we will have an infinite recursion. This brings us to the end of the module on introductory recursions, and I hope you guys understood recursions and we'll have a little problem coding using this technique.